Hey everyone, I wanted to come on here today and make a video about whether or not Elvis deserves the title of King of Rock and Roll or simply just the King. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on Elvis. I'm not. However, I do know a lot about him because I have been a fan all of my life and I have read hundreds of books and I have seen all just about every documentary and I even uh, have met and know people who knew Elvis. So I have a lot of knowledge about him. And uh, recently with the new trailer for the new Elvis biopic, biopic movie, um, it got a lot of positive, wonderful feedback. But of course you're gonna have those people that leave negative comments and say things about Elvis. For instance, I've read a lot of comments that he never deserved to be labeled the king of rock and roll because he stole and misappropriated black music and black culture. And to me, this is ludicrous. Lu I'm sorry, ludicrous. And it's horrible for people to say that because it's, uh, it's unfair. It's unfair to say that about Elvis because um, he opened a lot of doors for black people and black musicians. And before I go any further, let me just point this out. Uh, there's going to be some people, probably some trolls, that are going to come on here and say things because I've already gotten comments about, oh, well, you're prejudiced because you don't like black culture and you don't like black music and you don't like the fact that Elvis was influenced. And this is completely untrue. And I know these people are just trolls, like I said. But I'm going to nip that in the bud right now. I love all kinds of music. Yes, Elvis is my favorite artist of all time, but I love all kinds and all types of music, and I am a big fan of a lot of black artists, and I have an admiration for them. My second favorite male vocalist of all time is Sam Cooke. I love Sam Cooke. I think he was an amazing, amazing singer. One of my favorite female artists of all time is Janet Jackson. And of course, I am also a big Michael Jackson fan. I love Motown. I am an admirer of Chuck Berry and Little Richard and countless other black artists. And I realize that Elvis was very influenced by the black culture and black music. And I embrace that and I think it's a wonderful thing. My beef is with the people that say that he misappropriated their music and used it to gain fame and and to get rich and it had nothing to do with his talents or anything like that and I think that that is horrible to say that because it's not true if you do research you'll find out it's not true um, Elvis admired a lot of black music and a lot of black artists and he covered their songs and and he wasn't the first one to do this folks let's face it every artist in the history of music has covered at one time somebody else's music. It's a common thing, and that's because they admired or they were influenced by that music. And yes, they had music of their own, but they covered their music as well. So Elvis wasn't the first person to do this. And to me, that's why it's unfair for people to say this about him, because he's not the only one that did it. <laughs> and uh, he opened the door for a lot of black musicians who weren't being heard at the time because we lived in a very racially divided country, unfortunately, at that time. And there was a lot of tension between whites and blacks. And because of that, white people weren't listening to rhythm and blues and black music. And Elvis introduced it to the world and he, he made it acceptable to listen to it and more people started listening to it and opened the doors for people that we're not being paid attention to it as much, perhaps. And in my opinion, that is one of the reasons why he does deserve to be crowned the king of rock and roll, because if it weren't for him, those doors wouldn't have been knocked down, and those race, racial barriers wouldn't have been crossed and challenged. And a lot of the artists that Elvis admired and, and worked around actually make these statements and say this in interviews and if you don't believe me then I'll 
put a couple clips in here of those very artists talking about that very thing. So here you go. I wrote down just just some just some people that uh, of this the period who came in about the same period of time you did in yeah. rock and roll. Okay. And your reactions to them. I'm gonna rea right. I'm gonna react. I'm, I'm right. gonna be very be, be honest. Honest as I can be. Elvis Presley. I love him. That's my buddy, my baby. I love him. He was we are very good friends. And it was a very great loss to the music world. Elvis is one of the greatest performers ever lived in in this world and electrifying, elevated. Oh, he's just you can't say enough. He's just beautiful. Uh, I love Elvis. A man at times. And a they, legend. They said at times. Well, soul has no color, has no barrier. But I also had a lot of good people that uh, brought out a lot. Uh, I want to pay a tribute to a good friend of mine, Brother Elvis Preston, who uh, opened up a lot of doors for me to get through. Uh, Elvis was a pioneer. And, he came out one year before I did. He, he was out in 55, mm -hmm. Heartbreak Hotel. And uh, then I come in 56. And Elvis and I were very good friends up until the last minute of his body and life. But he'll always live because of the fact he was such a beautiful man. I don't care what nobody say, I know Elvis. You know, there are a lot of rumors. Elvis and I sang spiritual together. And uh, he'd buy any movie that I'd make, any film, he'd buy the film and, and, and close the theater up and show it. I love Elvis uh, for being a man. I love what he done for the people and the chance he gave me. Um, he kept me from being number one. <laughs> I was number one soul and he was number one world and it took a long time but it's almost like the two rental cars. Uh -huh. It made me try harder <laughs> and I love Elvis for it and, and we'll always pray for Elvis. I don't think he ripped them off. I think once something has been exposed, well, anyone can add or take from it if they like. He was just so great, so popular, so hot, so anything that he played, it became a hit. To me, they didn't make a mistake when they called him the king. Basically, by um, black performance, and uh, he, in essence, uh, because of at that particular time the kind of backwards uh, mental capability that many people had as uh, judging a person because of the color of their skin is somewhat still does exist but back then it was uh, worse and uh, he actually because of uh, him being um, a Caucasian brother he was able to uh, to do away with that whole thing. But uh, I thought he was a very beautiful, and still is, uh, a very beautiful person, and his memory shall probably forever live on. Elvis came out with a style of his own, and it, it was very creative. And once he got into it, and you, and you got that feel, Elvis just took off like a late freight. Mm -hmm. And with Elvis doing this kind of music, gave an injection to black music, that no other artist had ever done. So those are just a few of the artists that Elvis admired and who also admired Elvis, that um, Elvis covered, perhaps. And Elvis opened the doors for those people, and they say so in these interviews, and, and they appreciate him and his contributions in music. And um, another thing that irritates me is that people don't realize that Elvis was talented. <laughs> Whether you want to admit it or not, folks, Elvis had a wonderful, beautiful voice. Um, he had a magnetism about him. He had a charisma about him, and he was freaking gorgeous. Anybody that can't see that or hear his voice, excuse me if you get offended by this, but I'm just speaking the truth. You're deaf. You must be tone deaf and <laughs> pretty blind if you can't see those uh, facts. But you can have any artist come out and um, do a song, and that doesn't mean that they're gonna be skyrocketed into fame. They have to have some kind of talent and some kind of uh, presence about them, and Elvis had all of the above. And these are some of the reasons why I believe Elvis deserves the title of King of Rock and Roll because he was amazing. His voice was amazing. His looks were amazing. 
his charisma was amazing. Um, and yes, Elvis was very influenced by the black culture. This is true. But he was influenced by many, many, many different types of music. He was influenced by country music and the Grand Ole Opry. He once said that the Grand Ole Opry was probably the first thing he ever heard. His first uh, record that he made that made him famous was That's All Right Mama, uh, recorded by uh, Arthur Crudup. And if you turn that over, if you turn it over to the flip side, the flip side was a song called Blue Moon of Kentucky, which was originally recorded by a bluegrass artist named Bill Monroe. And so he was influenced, that record has two sides of his influences, the country, the country side and the rhythm and blue side. Um, he was influenced by people like the Statesman Quartet and the Blackwood Brothers who were uh, gospel groups that he loved and he admired and in fact he he worked with some of the members of the Blackwood Brothers later on in his life. J.D. Sumner was part of his uh, backup group and he was with the Blackwood Brothers um, he was, he did songs, he covered other songs by other artists too. He covered songs by Hank Williams. He covered songs by Hank Snow. He, he was, uh, let me think, what else? Uh, oh, his, Elvis covered other artists' songs, yes he did, but he also had songwriters who wrote for him. Um, people that weren't necessarily uh, musical artists. They didn't sing or perform music. They wrote music. Um, some examples of those are uh, Lieber and Stoller. They were a Jewish, a Jewish <laughs> writing team of guys who wrote many of Elvis's songs for him. Um, many of his famous hits. Uh, Doc Pomus and Mort Schumann. They wrote lots of Elvis' uh, hits for him as well. Um, Mark James. Mark James wrote songs like Suspicious Minds and Moody Blue for Elvis. So throughout his career, Elvis, yes, he covered a lot of music, but people wrote songs for Elvis too. A lot of his movie songs were written for him for like, unfortunately, for scenes in the movie mostly, but there were a lot of songs that became popular from Elvis's movies that were written for him for those movies. So Elvis didn't steal music. He he just embraced a lot of music and he uh, he took from it and he was influenced by it and he combined all that music together and infused it into his own style and his own way of delivering his style of music. And um, he, he absolutely deserves the title of King of Rock and Roll or ki the King. In my opinion, he is the King of Music. That's just my opinion. And, you know, that's because I love him so much and I am such a fan of his. But I think that he totally deserves that title. There are other people who were pioneers and, 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 um, came along about the time that he did, like Little Richard and... Um, Chuck Berry who were just as much of a pioneers of music as he was but I think that the reason that Elvis was given the title of King of Rock and Roll was because he had such a um, influence on the music and he he drove it drove it to what it was and he gave it its popularity so that people more people would look at it and in my opinion, he was the personification of rock and roll. When you see Elvis, you think rock and roll. So he absolutely deserves the title of King of Rock and Roll. And, you know, there are going to be people, people that disagree with me and hate on what I say, and that's fine. You have a right to your opinion, but this is mine, and I just wanted to come on here and give a little lesson of some of... Elvis's influences and and some of the reasons he made the music he did and some of the people that wrote the music for him that that did and hopefully instead of coming to false conclusions people will go and do research themselves and see these 
these things for themselves. And I'm going to end this video with some people who worked with Elvis and uh, knew Elvis talking about the kind of human being he was. And um, yes, these people that I'm going to leave clips of, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these clips before, but I'm going to leave them at the end of this video. Uh, yes, the, these are African American um, musicians and people. And the reason I want to leave this at the end is because um, I just want to squash some of those rumors about Elvis being a racist. He was not a racist. He loved all people of all colors and creeds and anything. And he was a wonderful man and a wonderful human being. And it's very a shame that people have to um, insult him and um, say these horrible things about him. So I'm going to leave these clips at the end and thank you for watching my videos and um, I appreciate all the subscribers that I've gotten. I, I'm, I think I'm over 600 subscribers which is amazing. If you like my videos it would be appreciated if you did subscribe. Um, it's up to you. You don't have to but it would be appreciated and I appreciate um, everybody who watches and thank you and pardon the video from my car but a lot of times my car is the most private place where I can make videos so that's why I'm videoing from my car so until the next video folks um, see you then and enjoy the next clip of videos it ain't my business what he did only thing I want to know was he my friend did I enjoy him as a performer? Did he give the world of entertainment something? Yes, on all counts. And that's the name of that tune. You understand what I mean? Good. Because without the jazz, no matter. He was wonderful. I loved him. He was such a gentleman and all that to me, you know. Tell me about that. Tell me, get, get, get. <laughs> well, when they first called, the girl said, I was pretty. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? I said, hey, it's a good gig and it's a good one. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, we went. And when we got there, it was nothing like what we might have thought, you know, because it was just wonderful. Well, it was really wonderful. He was into gospel. So every once in a while when we finished rehearsing with him, we just sing gospel, all of us, you know. And we just had a good time. He would good money and good pay and good, it was nice atmosphere. You know, and we didn't go around with him as his friends. We worked for him. So we saw him at work or at rehearsals. So I don't know what he did in between, nor did I care. You know, mm -hmm. I just doing what I was supposed to do, and we were. So uh, people said he was prejudiced. I said, well, I never felt his prejudice. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he was prejudiced, you know. He treated everyone, everyone the same. Everyone the same, yeah. He had black singers and white singers. He's had the Imperials, who was a men's group, very popular men's group. And we were the girls' group. It's been a special, so. I think people have, you know, certain stereotypes about him. I think so. Yeah. Because he was a wonderful person, so good looking, you just didn't want to even look nowhere else. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was so handsome, but he was just this nice, fun. You know, he cracked jokes and all that kind of crap, and you'd be singing, and he'd make you laugh and whatnot. <laughs> so we had a good time. Uh -huh. had a good run, whatever. Uh -huh. When we first decided to um, take the gig with Elvis, we had no idea that there would be any racial flack regarding it. Our first racial encounter was when we went to um, Texas. Elvis was told by his people that well, you can leave the black girls home. You don't have to bring them. So Elvis wasn't going to do the Astrodome unless his girls could be with him. And he demanded that we be given the star treatment. We had to be in our convertible where everybody could see us <laughs> and our little blonde could drive us. <laughs> and um, that was his statement. You don't like it, deal with it, or I'm not going to be there. And I thought that was very big. And I've been around him with people, other people of color. And I've only seen him give love. He very, was very generous to people that he didn't even know. You didn't have to be of any racial persuasion for him to love you.